And it's for the Lonsdale Flyweight Championship. Both challengers stacking up. Here are the numbers. Chaos Curtis, three years the younger. Both men identical in height. Nearly the same in weight as well, making that championship weight limit of 125 pounds. Chaos Curtis, perfect 4-0, but Perez with a serious edge with more than double the experience. Let's go to Bama's Master of Ceremonies, the official voice of Europe's leading promotion, Mr. Buddy Showtime Johnson. Bama 30, right here at 3 Arena in Dublin, Ireland. We are ready for three five-minute rounds in the professional flyweight division. This is for the vacant Lonsdale flyweight title. Introducing first, in the blue corner, standing five feet, seven inches tall, and weighing officially at 124.8 pounds. He has an official record of seven wins and four defeats. Representing and fighting out of Valencia, Spain, your first challenger for the title, Daniel Perez! And his opponent in the red corner, also standing, five feet seven inches tall, and weighed in officially at 123.4 pounds, with a flawless record of four wins, no defeat. Representing and fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, he is Ryan Chaos Curtis! When this championship action begins, your referee in charge is Mr. Daniel Moverheady. One of the very best in the business in charge of this title matchup, Daniel the Gentleman Mobahiti. Ryan Curtis in the red corner with the White Valley Tudo shorts, the camouflage trunks for challenger number two, Daniel Perez in the blue corner. Good coverage there from Perez as Curtis straight to the boxing. Curtis used a lot, utilizing that jab. He needs to start thinking about putting these punches in combinations and not coming forward when he punches. Perez, also a very proficient kicker. One of the big questions, I think, from a lot of the fans as well as the critics and pundits was what will the game plan be? Both men gifted everywhere, both men capable in all realms of mixed martial arts. When you got the cardio and the mobility and the athleticism of the flyweight division, Dean, this is as fun as it gets in European MMA. Perez has a very high fight IQ. He knows when to chase and when to back off. Let's see if he evolves that in his game plan here in front of us tonight. Guys, again, utilizing that jab because he's gauging the distance. He's trying to set up that right hand. Curtis eats a huge right hand and a switch kick to the midsection for the Spaniard. Curtis on Wobble Street. He's on ice skates, Dean. Whoa! Perez with the punishing knees. He's really getting through. He smells blood. He's going upstairs and downstairs, punches and kicks. Go, Perez, go! Perez, absolutely a dynamo in center ring. But Curtis able to tie him up, Dean, and catch a moment to recover. Smart play by Curtis, who's hurt there from the headshots and the body shots. And closing the distance gives him time to recover and not receive any more damage that will throw off the equilibrium in his brain. Incredible decision making. That's what we knew was going to be key for the Curtis camp. Was that fight IQ? Was that ring awareness and ring generalship game? Curtis has got beautiful balance, and we're seeing that here. Very aware of where he is in space. Very hard to take him down and indeed to sweep him if it goes to the floor. And more importantly, when you're rocked like that, Dean, that's another skill in itself. Looking for the single leg, looking to run the pipe, but Barres firing the hips downwards, sprawling. Possibly looking for a guillotine here. Difficult to finish up against the cage. Ops to go, back to the underhook. And we knew this was going to be a competitive matchup. We knew this would be a matchup that could shift gears at a moment's notice, that could really go from zero to 100 at a moment's notice. But what a chin on Ryan Curtis. And this is the type of fight that's very exciting. Looks to be a battle who can land that fight changing shot or gain the dominant position first. So don't look away, folks. Curtis off the jab. Double jab from Curtis. Plotting onwards as Perez ties up and forces him all the way across the ring. This is why this division is so exciting, Dean. Both guys are so capable at coupling uh, real estate, if you will. Perez complaining about an eye poke there. Curtis used the head to get off, but he's landing some decisive punches now. Setting up combinations off the jab. 
Perez again, a nice kick to the midsection. Curtis looking to go upstairs. Perez, single kick, and the penalty is the head single, the head inside single. Perez now on his back. Curtis did a great job of timing the kick from Perez and using it to take him down. Kept heavy on the leg, heavy on the hips. Now finds himself in the open guard. He's going to look to try and pass, but there we go. Perez sensing that. Close the guard. He's in full guard position now, working the overhooks. And the crowd really getting behind Curtis here. A good dominant position for the Dubliner. Let's see what he can do here out of close guard. Perez, happy to tie him up and control with that overhook. Perez all about position before submission. So you'll see him set up these solid positions and then look for the submission to finish. Doesn't put himself in any unnecessary danger, Chris. But it will be very interesting to see just exactly how Perez deals with the wrestling pressure of Curtis. And right now, at least it would seem trying to force a stagnant position. I mean, he was thinking about an armbar there, Dean, but Curtis way too savvy. Perez controlling the wrist there of Curtis, a key point in MMA. And transitioning from the jiu-jitsu background and making it a blow. Oh, hey, up kick there, that rocks Curtis. And Perez catches Curtis flush. Look at Perez explode. Trying to work up to his feet. Daniel Mobahidi watching for the cage grab. But Curtis has really had to think about plan B here right now with the wrestling. And that's certainly keeping him in dominant positions more often than not. And you see Curtis look at Perez there. I think he was checking to see how tired Perez was. Curtis has been putting the pressure on, initiating the takedowns. He's been forcing Perez to work. And just take a look at some of those highlight real moments of the round team. Tons of pressure from Perez. And here we see him timing the right hand. And then that switch kick to the face. How Curtis ate that and kept standing. Unbelievable. There's that crazy up kick. I think that rocked Curtis, but he came about quite quick. Lucky that there he was in the open guard and get, get caught into the triangle. You see there, he fires his head back down, tries to keep it to the outside, and stuffs the legs of Perez. The timing and the power of the Spaniard has certainly been, I think, his most effective tools thus far in this contest. What does Curtis need to do to get him down and put him on his back again, Dean, without those possible consequences? Really set up those striking and believe in your striking game, and that will transfold into the better techniques and indeed connecting more. Set up some kicks, use the cage like he's been doing in round one. Round two of a scheduled three. The flyweight belt on the line tonight in Dublin. Perez looking for that body shot there on the left side. He's got some success with that switch kick, that lead kick. If he can fake that kick and come up high with that left hook. He might... Oh! And he gets floored with an uppercut. Perez falls to his back. Curtis shocks the crowd as cheers erupt in the arena. But Perez seems okay. That was huge, Dean. Perez dropped the level, looked for the takedown, and Curtis met him with that uppercut. But like we know, Perez, he recovers really well. He's doing a great job of tying up Curtis on the ground. Gotta be careful about giving his back up, Chris. Curtis is so slick. He knows exactly when to go from one move to the next. But Perez has been so game. And arguably, it seems actually has a speed advantage in some circumstances, but Curtis is starting to get that timing down, and he connected beautifully there. Curtis is so at one with his grappling. You'll notice, even when he's being forced to defend up against the cage, he's constantly moving, constantly using the underhooks, pivoting round, changing the position. He really doesn't stay stagnant and doesn't allow Daniel Perez to implement his own takedown game. And one of the things to watch out for here is clinch dominance. Who's able to get the ascendancy at close range? Right now, Curtis seemingly uh, plenty of gas in the tank, and Perez getting a little bit frustrated, Dean. Curtis utilizes some great footwork. He's moving from left to right. He's not following Perez. Perez now looking for the takedown, but Curtis straight into the single leg. Beautiful job there from Curtis. Shrugs off the takedown attempt of Perez. Looks for one of his own. That is next level decision making under pressure. Perez has got to pass that left hand over the head 
and try and face Curtis. He can't give up his back in this position. What Curtis will try and do is body lock, use one of his legs to sweep Perez round. But there we go, Perez sensed that now, and he's trying to, but there's the reap from Curtis, looking to change it into a single, but gets turned against the cage. Beautiful knee to the body from Perez. And Perez connects, left to the bread basket, straight right to the face. Curtis looking to stand and train. Curtis backing off. Big right kick lands again. Perez really switching up the punches. I love the way he's going to the body and to the head, really mixing it up. Long knee there from Curtis. Perez covers up, and then Curtis mixes in the takedown. The difference in this fight right now, Dean, has been the intelligent use of the boxing to set up that level change. Curtis with the initiation of his technique, super fast. He's transitioning now, looking for the double leg. Didn't get the clasp, but Perez quite correctly using the wizard to hype Curtis back up, defending the takedown. What a fight tonight. We knew after so many great performances from these young, up-and-coming athletes tonight in Bama, that Perez and Chaos Curtis would not disappoint Dean, this one leaving up to every expectation. Curtis now utilizing this opportunity. Oh, big hip throw there from Perez. And Perez thrashes Curtis, who goes airborne and drops for the choke. Can he get it? He's going to go for the guillotine here. Perez is going to look to turn it to get to mount. This looks very tight. He's going to try and lever his body away while keeping his arms around the neck and the arm. An arm in guillotine attempt here from Perez. And Perez swapping up the choke, thinking about going for that Tars. He's gone from a guillotine to an arm in technique. Can he get it? Curtis grimacing there under pressure. He's going to look to put some pressure on the top of the arm of Curtis. The arm of Perez and the arm of Curtis will choke him. He needs to keep his, his body down. But you see Curtis there trying to spin out of it and gets out of the position. And the crown goes wild as Chaos Curtis evades disaster there. Excellent composure. He knew he had just enough room to breathe. No doubt getting cranked on that neck team. That looked miserable. Beautiful transitions from Perez. And let's see if he can pass the guard. He needs these dominant positions. In this position, he can land some hammer fists, some shots, but there's no decisive submissions being offered. What an intriguing contest in every sense of the word. Action in every single facet of mixed martial arts. 25 seconds left on the clock. And it seems to me that Curtis now is using this opportunity to recover. A viable option in MMA, especially jiu-jitsu, use your technique to regain some of your oxygen debt. Oh, this big elbow's being dropped here by Perez. Perez surging here again, looking for the back take. Curtis doing everything he can to defend. I cannot believe the activity of these two athletes. Perez now with the double hooks in at the end of the round. He really was gonna open up with the strikes there, but Brian Curtis literally saved by the bell. Just when you thought it was going one way, Curtis really imposing as well. But Perez has put in a feisty performance. Let's take a look at some of those pieces, Dean, of what has been a truly memorable affair between Perez and Curtis. There's his body shots. Delivered nice right hand there from Perez. Really did a great job of going upstairs and downstairs and finishing with the kick. Here we see some clinch work from Curtis utilizing his head and the beautiful hip toss there from Perez. Going Haraya Goshi. Perez has got so many tricks. But right now, I think Curtis really sticking to the game plan has probably won a lot of the exchanges, but the judges, of course, with that different scoring criteria now introduced this year are gonna be looking for significant moments in this fight fight ending moments. I think this is going to be a very interesting contest if it does go the next full five minutes to score, Dean. So the third and final round, a touch of gloves. Perez and Curtis. Perez with the camo trunks in the blue corner. Curtis in the red corner with those white ballet Tudo shorts. Surprise shot there from Perez. Beautifully timed, level change now finds himself again on top. Like to see him pass to a more dominant position. Looks like he's gonna lock that head up. Could have a guillotine attempt here using the sprawl. Double leg attack down, but you see Ryan Curtis there. He's got his left arm underneath the right arm of Perez. He's gonna try and hike him up there with that underhook. This fight 
seriously complex and certainly very interesting the way we've seen both guys swap takedown dominance. Right now, Berez in the ascendancy. Nice outside reap there from Berez. Finds himself straight in side control. And he transitioned straight to that position after the takedown. Didn't waste his time. Didn't allow Curtis to gain the half guard. Curtis looking to kick off the cage, turn it into a single leg. Berez now is going to look to tarp the head. Perhaps looking to turn Curtis against the cage. But Curtis does a great job here of forcing all of his weight forward. You see his lead leg. He push forward and he'll give all his weight to Perez, forcing him to work. Certainly a difficult thing to do when you're in the third round of what has been a grueling contest. This is where conditioning takes over. You have little control of all of the variables of mixed martial arts. If you've got gas in the tank, you can push the pace. Right now, Ryan Chaos, Curtis looking for that head and arm choke. Perez doing the correct thing of answering the phone, almost like his arms across his ear to stop that arm guard into his neck and causing the choke. But now he finds himself in the half guard, looking to regain the full guard here, Chris. He's going to move his hips, using the right leg to post. Hip escape. Oh, big elbows from the top. Downward elbows there from Perez. Perez regains full guard. These next few minutes are key. Curtis now working on the top, and you could arguably say he's using these opportunities to rest because he is tired. He's been forced to work. Perez, very strong and powerful in his defense. He's working on the bottom now. You can see here, look, Curtis is just laying on the top. Looks like he's trying to pass to that right side. And it's Curtis who gets back up. Perez looking for that knee. This is key right now. If Curtis can continue to stick to this game plan, he can avoid those dangerous moments from Perez. But look at this, just when we say so, Perez with the back take. I cannot believe the exchange of dominant positions between both individuals. Body triangle, Chris. This serves to keep your opponent breathing very hard. It sucks the life out of you, forces the diaphragm to contract so you can't gain any more air or as much air into your lungs. And Perez is using this opportunity to punch. He's got to be careful about Curtis turning in the guard. The only downfall to this body lock position. Opsa goes straight back to the full body lock, looking for the rear naked choke. He's got to sneak that arm underneath the chin, Chris. And certainly, Curtis doing the right thing and turning towards the side of that lock to relieve pressure. The side where the ankle is crossed underneath the other knee. Perez read it and hit straight to mount. Half guard. Perez very aware of where he is on top. You notice that Curtis maneuvered out of that position. But Perez, almost like riding a horse, he went with the motion, went with the movements, and kept his weight down and didn't get thrown off. Curtis now needs to think about utilizing the underhooks. I like to see him get his left arm underneath the right arm of Perez and work the sweeps or retain the guard. Perez, tons of pressure here. Looking to slide out of that open half guard. He's got that knee shield. Curtis doing everything he can to try to recover here. These are these little moments, the little invisible details of grappling for mixed martial arts. Perez relentless with his strikes from the top, really pounding those elbows in, and that allowed him to pass. It kept Curtis thinking about the strikes, and now he looks to get his knee across the belly. Using the hammer fist to soften him up. Big elbows from the top from Daniel Barrez. And Barrez is going to go for it here. He's got that knack. Curtis knew it. Escape, and we're back to the feet. Spinning back fist there. Pump man looking to engage. 10 seconds to go on the clock. And this is what we're talking about, Daniel Barrez's high fighter IQ. He went for that guillotine attempt again, but immediately backed out when he felt he wasn't going to get it. He got back to his feet. Both men leave everything in the ring. Perez and Curtis go the distance tonight in Dublin. And both camps believe they've done enough to take the belt, to clinch the victory. That was 15 minutes, Dean, of thrilling action. Let's take a look at the recap here. You see the big knees from Perez, the body kicks, the flurry of punches, really is looking for the finish. And again, the Harai Goshi, Chris, and Perez is just able to innately stay on top. 
Curtis the handiwork here, turning the corner, unsuccessful, Barres again from the top, switches straight to the hooks, looking for the back mount. And there were so many moments for both guys to capture a finish. But neither willing to concede, there were punches, kicks, there was kickboxing, there was movement, there was fast transitions, there was grinding exchanges, and it was certainly a fight for the ages tonight at Bama 30. On a knife edge in Dublin here as the judges render their verdict and turn in the scorecards. And we will find out who will walk away. The flyweight champion, Buddy Johnson, makes it all official. Over to Buddy for the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds in this championship matchup, we go to our judges' scorecards. And all three judges score the bout 30-27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, and new Lonsdale flyweight champion, Daniel 